you've messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. For today's Daily Dose of Stupid, Joe Biden is going to be the source and the uh, main event when it comes to today's Daily Dose of Stupid because Joe Biden, who we've known for a while now, has no idea how guns work, would have absolutely no idea, would be completely clueless in some kind of a gunfight because of things he said in the past. He just reinforced that today with this clip. Check this out from earlier today. Because we also have to fundamentally change the way in which police are trained. Police are trained much more. Now, and by the way, there are a lot of people, overwhelmingly it's African Americans who have been victimized, shot, and there's a lot of other people who are shot and killed in the Hispanic community and the white community. And the idea that instead of standing there and teaching a cop who is an unarmed person to be coming at him with a knife or something to shoot him in the leg instead of in the heart is a very different thing. There's a lot of different things that can change. Joe Biden with the mask on telling people, all right, so the real problem, what we're going to do is we're going to fundamentally change how we train cops. In fact, one of the things we're going to do is when a guy's charging you with a knife, we're going to teach him, hey, you don't shoot him in the... You don't shoot him in the heart, you shoot him in the leg. Does he think Deadpool was real? <laughs> I mean, you've, if you've seen like that opening fight scene in Deadpool where Deadpool can basically put a bullet anywhere that he wants to, that uh, at one point he shoots three guys in the head consecutively to where he uses one bullet to take out three people at the cot and he just lines up the... I mean, I'm, I'm kidding myself, of course. There's no way that Joe Biden has seen Deadpool and if he has, he probably doesn't remember it. But nonetheless, like, does he really think that that's how guns work? Now, granted, I'm a pretty dang good shot. I'm not the best. I'm not like, you know, anywhere near competitive level, but I'm a really good shot. And I can go ahead and tell you now, do you have any idea how hard it is to hit a moving target? Okay, now, instead of hitting a moving target just generically, try specifically going for the legs. That's darn near impossible. It's hard enough to hit a guy in motion when he is running directly at you and hit him center of mass. That's not easy to do if he's moving. Try, now imagine trying to do that and shoot a moving target with somebody's legs that are going up and down and constantly in that motion. It can't be done. I mean, maybe you just shoot in the general vicinity of a leg and happen to luck up and hit one. But... That's one of the dumbest things that you could do because there's a good chance you're not going to eliminate the target and even a, a person that's not necessarily athletic can close distance like that. If you're 21 feet away from somebody, they actually showed a demonstration. I've seen this uh, online. The world's fastest quick draw expert. He had his pistol concealed. Uh, he has the, I think, the fastest quick draw record in his state, I don't know if he's like the world champion or anything, but this dude is fast. And they showed a guy that had to be pushing 380. Charge him from 21 feet away. He closed the distance before the guy could get his gun out and at the ready to be able to shoot. Like people that haven't taken safety courses or know anything about guns, they have no idea how difficult it is and what kind of danger you're in from somebody that, that has a knife that could close in on you. That is a life or death situation. And so now you not only take away from the fact, do you think this guy has like five or six minutes to just stand there and carefully aim and uh, pick up on the motion and try to figure out where his leg is going to be when he pulls the trigger? That's impossible. Unless you're talking about a Hollywood movie, you cannot do that. And so Joe Biden, apparently, that's his, uh, that's his solution to this problem is that we just wing him and uh, hit him in the leg when that happens. No, when, a, when you pull a knife on a police officer, and that's the scenario that he just gave, he said whether they have a knife or they're unarmed, whether they're basically saying as long as they don't have a gun, that a police officer shoots them in the leg instead of the heart. Dude, you pull a knife on a cop, you have forfeited your own life. If you try to attack a cop, even just with your fist, you have forfeited your own life. People should know that ahead of time. That, that's common sense. If I pull a knife on a cop, there's a, a decent chance that I will die. 
And that's something that should be universally known to everybody, which is the reason that you shouldn't pull knives on cops. Because if they feel threatened, if their life is, in threaten, is being threatened, not only do they have the ability given to them by the law as law enforcement officers to do that, they have an inborn human right given to them by God to do everything to preserve their life. And as somebody who has worked with both guns and knives, I've actually been trained in both combat styles. I can tell you that you can kill somebody, if, if you're at close distance, you can kill somebody with a knife just as easily as you can with a gun. If you're close enough, it's actually easier to kill someone with a knife. And so the idea that, oh, well, they're not really being threatened if the guy's just charging with a knife, you can kill somebody with your bare hands pretty quickly if you hit them in the right spot. Or you can get close enough to them to disarm them. More people are killed every year in homicides by hands and feet than firearms. That's not me talking. That's the FBI statistics. More people die in homicides from that than guns. And so Joe Biden really is living in a fantasy world if he believes that this is in any way a viable option. I don't care how good a shooter you are, hitting somebody's legs while they're in motion like that, while they're coming at you with a deadly weapon, that's not going to fly. When you draw your weapon, and this is true of cops and it's true of everybody else, when you draw a gun, you better be prepared to fire it and kill. You don't fire to wing somebody. You don't fire to injure them. You fire to kill. You are eliminating the threat to your life, which is the reason that we should all be super hesitant to draw our weapons. And that's one of the things they will also teach you in a gun safety course. You don't draw the weapon unless you feel you absolutely have to and your life is in danger. But once you do, you shoot to kill. This isn't a movie you can't just take, you can't shoot to injure somebody. Now, maybe you wind up doing that and that stops them. But if you're a police officer in this situation, let's say it's just somebody with a pipe. It's not even a knife. What if that person's on drugs? You don't know who they are. If you shot them in the leg, they may not even feel it. They may keep going. That might not stop them at all. Where do you think that bullet goes if the cop misses? Like, let's say a cop actually does try to aim for somebody's legs or, or any shooter for, for you know, uh, just a regular citizen defending himself. What happens if you try to wing somebody, shoot him in the legs, and you miss? Well, unless you're in some kind of pasture or something like that where you've got ground, I mean, like some kind of soil, or grass, that sort of thing. You, you could be in that scenario. Maybe you're in a park or something like that. But let's say it's out in the, the streets where some of this stuff takes place. Shoot on the concrete, shoot on the asphalt. What happens to that bullet? It's going to ricochet, especially when you pointed it at an angle. You're aiming down. What's going to happen to that bullet is it's going to ricochet now, Hopefully, it doesn't wind up hurting anybody, but there's a chance that if there's anybody even remotely nearby, which there probably would be in, in those situations, probably near the attacker, like let's say that the cop is trying to stop a mugging and the guy starts coming after him. Well, if he starts shooting at the guy's leg and that bullet ricochets, there's a chance it could hit the victim. There's a really good chance that it winds up causing some kind of property damage or hurting somebody along those ways. You don't fire at the ground. That's incredibly dangerous. There are non-lethal options for cops to use. There are. They have tasers. They have their nightsticks. There are non-lethal options that cops have, and they do use them when they feel that their life is not threatened. But once their life is threatened, once the life of other people around them are threatened, they have 100% authority, just like a regular citizen would be, to defend their own life with lethal force, and that's the way that it should be. The idea that we would, pardon the pun, handcuff our cops by saying, well, no, you can't use deadly force even if you are being threatened with deadly force, that's absurd. That would make a cop less able to defend himself than even the average citizen. Now, cops should have extra accountability over the average citizen. I agree with that. They should be more careful in their actions. They should be held to a higher standard than the average citizen. I agree with that as well. But once his life is threatened, all bets are off, and that is a God-given right. Once your life is threatened, you have the absolute divine-given right to defend your own life or the lives of other people. That's non-negotiable.
This is Joe Biden back in 2013, basically telling his wife to just fire indiscriminately into the woods with a double barrel shotgun. That's this is the world we live in, folks. So, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here or walk out, put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. I promise you, who's ever coming in is not going to. You don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim. It's harder to use. And in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Buy a shotgun. <laughs> So the idea that, oh, uh, AR-15, it's harder to aim, it's harder to shoot. No, it's actually significantly easier to aim and shoot, especially if you've got a scope. But even if you're just using iron sights, which is what most shotguns would have, even if you're just using the iron sights and you don't have a scope on it, I've shot both, believe me, an AR-15 is significantly easier to aim. And what's really funny is that's actually a felony in Delaware, his home state. So if his wife were to do that and go out and shoot indiscriminately when the, she thinks somebody might be around the house with a double barrel shotgun, first of all, he said fire off two shots, which means what? Well, now she has to reload. She is out of ammo now. So if there was somebody that was actually threatening the, her and she just wasted her only two shots on warning shots and now has to reload, so she's in trouble. So it's A, impractical. But B, in the state of Delaware, that's actually a felony. If you fire around and you don't believe that your life is being threatened, that's a law in Delaware that that would actually be a felony for her to do that. So Joe Biden absolutely has no idea what the heck he's talking about. And in 2015, a guy actually tried to use the Joe Biden defense, saying that he fired a pistol up into the air to try to scare off people that were going to attack him. And they wound up convicting the guy. <laughs> He's like, but, but J Vice President Joe Biden told me to do it. And they're like, yeah, doesn't matter. He's, you still can't do that. But what's funny about that is, and there was actually a guy that specifically cited Joe Biden as the reason for doing that, that in the media's mind, because it just shows the complete double standard, in the media's mind, Donald Trump going on TV and saying, hey, maybe you should ask your doctor about this new drug that we're having some success with in treating COVID-19, hydroxychloroquine, which is a drug that's been around for a really long time. Maybe you should ask your doctor about receiving that treatment. Uh, they say, oh, well, that means that the guy who drank literal fish tank cleaner, which is not even hydroxychloroquine, it's a different chemical, but that somehow was the president's fault. <laughs> And Joe Biden telling people to fire indiscriminately into the woods, even though there's a guy that specifically fired up into the air, citing him as the reason that he was allowed to do that. That's not Joe Biden's fault. In Trump's case, telling somebody to see their doctor and ask them about this specifically new drug and see if it's okay for them to take it, wildly different from a guy hearing, hey, let me drink some fish tank cleaner, which we found out now was probably just his wife poisoning him and killing him. Uh, but the second half of that is that when somebody does exactly what Joe Biden said to do, not having to read between the lines or pretending that the drug that he was suggesting even, you know, just because it happens to sound somewhat similar to the ingredients in the fish tank cleaner, when he actually does exactly what Joe Biden told him to do, which is firing off a gun in a random direction to try to scare off an attacker, oh, that guy, we've got to, yeah, that, that was totally not Joe Biden's fault. The double standard here is just absolutely astounding. My mother always said if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.